Welcome back to the studio. So last um, week we made gnomes using these fun triangle patterns that I had made years ago to do mountains out of, which are these mountains that I did for a wedding centerpiece for tables. I can't remember how many mountains, but a lot of mountains. Anyway, so we made one of these gnomes last week using the middle pattern, okay? So I've been thinking about other things that we can make. And of course, Halloween's coming up. It's one of my favorite holidays, especially to do pottery for. And this is the ghost with the small one, little baby ghost. And can you just imagine a little fairy light underneath him? And the mama ghost. And this one was done with the middle size. And then of course, daddy. It's really sad if you think about the story behind this family that they all died together. Anyway, morbid. Was done with the bigger one. So I thought I would show you how I did it. So the tools that you're gonna need are actually my favorite little finger wooden tool. Knife. Um, if you do a hat, maybe a flower. This is a little little this stamp that I've got. Uh, a little pony roller, or you could probably do it without the pony roller. And some cookie cutters if you're gonna do a hat. But you don't have to do a hat. In fact, um, I'll show you how to do, we're gonna do the middle one again, which is the same size as the gnome. I've got my slab already rolled out um, about a quarter of an inch. Let's see if I can show you. About a quarter of an inch. And I have already compressed it, got the, I have a slab roller. So I've already gone through with this metal rib and got the texture of the canvas out of it and uh, smoothed it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So just go ahead and cut this one instead of following along the lines of my pattern that are curved at the bottom. I do curve the top. I actually just come down and just cut it straight. Actually, you can't even see this. Let me bring you down a little bit. So I actually just um, bring it straight. So I just, I'll bring it out here so you can show it, see it. So I just cut it like that. And this pattern is six by six. It's six by six triangle, okay? Let me go ahead and quickly cover up my slab. It is 98 degrees here in Utah with 11% humidity. So my clay is going to dry out fast. Excuse me while I give you a little ride here. Okay, so once you've got your, your slab, I'm actually going to quickly um, stamp the inside with my Hobble Creek pottery and uh, a little logo. So I've got that that's on the inside. So one thing to do with the pony roller is I come in and I will roll the side. Rather than cut at a 45, I'm just gonna roll a 45 into it. So I flipped it over, did one side, did the other. I've got my little scoring tool, so I'll score down the side flip it back over, score down that side, flip it up into my hand, make a little taco, and then I will slip one of those sides. And then I'll bring, bring it together. So just kinda, this um, tool is called a pizzle. I found that out from last time. I will put the link to where I bought it, and I bought it on Amazon. Um, it's actually used a lot in making spouts for teapots, but it helps so that I have something to push against. So I'll bring that up and around, make sure I line up the bottom. I always worry about the bottom more so than I do the top because the top we're going to actually pull into the little flip at the top. So once I've got this together, I'm 
So I basically have just got it kind of tacked. It's not really pushed down or smoothed in. But one thing that's kind of cool about this tool is I can flip it over and roll it and really get that seam secured. And then I come back with my metal rib and smooth over it. Make sure that, um, don't worry about the top so much. I always have to go back around the whole thing with this rib because we're so dry that it doesn't take long for clay to crack. And I'm actually working with Reclaim, so it doesn't take long at all for that to crack. So then I'll come in and just hit that seam on the inside and smooth it over. Make sure that it's well secured. Okay, take a sponge and just kind of, just like we did with the gnome, just kind of clean up the bottom, just make it softer, not quite so sharp. As you know, anything in pottery, if it's sharp in the green wear stage, it'll be razor sharp in the glaze stage. So smooth that over. Okay, so we've got the top here to deal with. What I do, just like when you pull a handle, just get it wet, and I'll just start smoothing, making sure that joint's covered, and I will just pull it out even a little bit more. And then, when I get it the way I like it, and this is a really light touch, it doesn't take much to do this. Then I'll take it, and kind of bend it over and flip it up. And you can do however you want on this little little flip, little ghostly flip. Okay, so then I'll put this back in. This is how fast and fun these guys are. So now I'm going to come in make sure you can see this and I am kind of gonna do teardrop eyes you know because they're ghosts so I'll cut one out I don't care about them being the same they don't even have to be next to each other I mean it's all the eyes are and the mouth I mean this is what gives your ghost its expression and you can do whatever So, then I'll come in with my brush and just clean that in. I don't worry about the inside. I smooth the eye. I smooth the eye and the mouth really well. But any of the goobers or whatever that are going to end up on um, the inside, when they're dry, I'll just reach like a fettling knife up on the inside, just knock them off. So then I take the sponge and I literally just smooth them over and it just quickly gives them a very ghostly look. And that is your ghost. There isn't anything else you need to do to it unless you want to add something decorative to it. So I'll show you how I do the hat. Actually, his little thing might be, I think I'm going to take some of that off and get it more to a point and then flip you over. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that looks better. All right, so if I wanted to add a little witch hat to this, I have a whole bunch of cookie cutters in all different sizes. I'm going to pick this one. Actually, this one might be too big. I have other sizes. Just a second. There it is. So, yep, that's better. So I'm going to come over here, cut out a hat. Just going to cut out a circle. And then I have miniatures, miniature, miniature families on Amazon too. They're just a bunch of cookie cutter 
miniatures. And I'm going to cut out the center of the hat. This would be really, really a great um, activity for kids. I don't even score this part because I am going to smush that on to the ghosts. Let me put this back in there, make sure I've got something to work against so I don't um, collapse my ghosts. And then I'm just gonna smooth this in to it. All the way around. I'm not going to worry about the underside of the hat because technically it shouldn't be smoothed into in because hats sit on heads. So just smooth that out. Then I'll come in here, just kind of pinch the brim and uh, make this a little thinner so it doesn't look quite so chunky. Rim of the hat should be a little thinner anyway. Smooth it with the sponge. Ooh, with my finger. Okay. And it needs to have kind of a jaunt. I like hats with a little bit of an attitude. All right, so if I wanted to say add a flower, like I did with my one over there, I'll just take a piece of scrap and cut a little strip. Just nothing fancy. That's probably in between an, an eighth and a quarter of an inch. I just dipped it in the water. And I am going to wrap the hat. Now, I keep the seam where this is at, um, where I'm going to put my flower. So I'll cut it there. Cut it there. And press it on the hat. Again, put this thing in there so I have something to work against. And this I will just smooth with my brush. Just go all the way around, just make sure. Get the extra slip off there. And then for the flower, I'm just gonna grab that center section of the hat that we cut out, press my little forget-me-not into it, and then cut it out. You could add leaves. You could put a little spider up there, a little ladybug. I mean, whatever your imagination can. Ooh, I might just have to do a ladybug. I love ladybugs. Oh, you could even do a butterfly. But with Halloween, something creepy might be really fun. If you want to do a spider. <laughs> I don't want to do the legs of a spider. Okay, so there's a little, little flower, a little flower I will score. Just score this just a bit. Add a little bit of slip. And I will put this back in because I am going to press against and I don't want to collapse my... Actually, there you go. Got a little, little flower. Sorry, if I took you out of the screen on that. Anyway, cute little ghost. If you try one of these, I'd love to see pictures. You can have a whole family of ghosts, a whole haunting going on. How fun would that be? So next week, if um, 
following along, subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notified um, when I put up a new, uh, video. I'm going to take this same pattern and I'm going to do a witch because witches are my favorite. Anyway, hope you're having a great day and thanks for watching.